the hyperbolic partial differential equations the most simplest problem of this class is one dimensional wave equation let u equal to u function of r comma t where r is a vector of r in the n dimensional real space and u is a scalar function which satisfy the following differential equation that is del to u del t2 equal to c square nabla to u that is nabla is a differential operator space differential operator and t is the time variable the nabla to the operator nabla to is called the laplacian in the space r in and c is a constant and this represents the speed of the wave propagation this equation can also be written as square 2 u equal to 0 where square 2 equal to nabla 2 minus 1 by c square delta 2 delta t2 this operator is known as the elementrian operator in case of one dimension the above equation is delta u delta t2 equal to c square into delta 2 u del x2 where t the time variable should be greater than 0 and the boundary conditions are 0 and 1 that is x lies between 0 and 1 the initial conditions are u x comma 0 equal to fx and the first derivative del u del t at t equal to 0 equal to gx where x lies between 0 and 1 and the boundary conditions are u 0 comma t equal to phi t and u 1 comma t equal to psi t where t is greater than or equal to 0. So phi t and psi t are the given functions and this represents the boundary conditions. Now the partial derivative del 2 u del x2 and del 2 u del t2 are approximated by the following central difference schema at the mesh point ij. So del 2 u del x2 is approximated by this expression and the error of this approximation is order of h2 n and del 2 u del t2 is approximated by this expression and the truncation error is of order k square. And this two expression is valid for all i equal to 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. And these are the values of the parameter or the indexes j also. Using this approximation, the given equation, that is given hyperbolic equation, becomes this expression. After simplification, it is reduces to equation 6, where the parameter i equal to c into k by h. Note that in this equation, the right-hand side contain four values, ui minus 1j, uij, ui plus 1j, and ui j minus 1. The three value, first three values are appears in the same level at level j and the last value appears in the lower level j minus one level. If these four values are known or available then we can calculate the value of u at the mesh point i comma j plus one. So this is also an explicit formula to solve hyperbolic equation. That means the values of u i comma j plus one depends on the value of u at the two time levels j minus one and j and the value of u i comma j plus one can be determined if the four values u i minus one comma j, u i comma j, u i plus one comma j, u i comma j minus one are known. So these are the diagrammatic representation of the known and unknown mesh values. Note that the three mesh values are present in the same time level that is along the J rows and another mesh value is present along the time level J minus 1. If these four values are known, then we can calculate the value of U at the mesh point, the middle mesh point along the vertical line I and the horizontal line J plus 1. So this is the, uh, this is the graphical representation of the known and unknown meshes for hyperbolic equation. When J equal to 0, then from equation 6, we have ui comma 1 equal to r square into ui minus 1 0 plus 2 into 1 minus r square ui comma 0 plus r square ui plus 1 comma 0 minus ui comma minus 1. But ui comma minus 1 is not a valid value but this value can be determined from the initial condition for first derivative. Since ux comma 0 equal to fx therefore we can write ui 0 equal to f of xi which is equal to f5 that means ui minus 1 0, ui 0 and ui plus 1 0 can be determined from this expression. Using this notation the above equation reduces to the equation 7. So from this equation we can determine the values of u i comma 1 for all values of i but the last term u i comma minus 1 is unknown. Now to find this value we approximate the initial condition 4 by central difference approximation and it is nothing but 1 by 2k into u i comma 1 minus u i comma minus 1 equal to g i where g i is the given function and from this equation we can find the value of u i comma minus 1. So using the value of u i comma minus 1 the equation 7 finally reduces to equation 8. So from this equation we can determine the value of u i comma 1 for all values of i. Note that the right hand side are known functions that is f is a given function g also another given function. Thus the above equation gives the values of u i comma 1 for i equal to 1 2 3 4 and so on. Note that the truncation error of this method is order of h square plus k square where h and k are the statement along the x and t directions and the formula 6 is convergent for 0 strictly less than r less than equal to 1. So this is the limitation of consider the following wave equation. This is a particular case of hyperbolic partial differential equation. To illustrate the implicit explicit method mentioned in the previous slides, the wave equation is the very standard wave equation is del 2 u del t2 equal to c square into del 2 u del x2. If this equation represents the wave propagation, then c represents the speed of the wave. If it represents the propagation of light, then c represents the speed of light and so on. The boundary conditions are u0 t equal to 0, u1 t equal to 0 for any t greater than 0 because t is a time so t must be greater than 0 and it may be 0. Since it is a boundary condition therefore t should be greater than 0. 
That means we have assumed that the value of x lies between 0 and 1. And the initial conditions are given by the equation u x at t equal to 0 equal to 4x square and del u del 2, del u del t equal to 0 when t equal to 0. And these two conditions are satisfied for all values of x lies between 0 and 1. So for this problem, two boundary conditions are given and two initial conditions are given. Now our problem is to find the value of u for x equal to 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, dot 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 1.0 and t equal to 0, comma 0 0.1, comma 0 0.2 up to 0 0.5 by taking c equal to 1. That means here we assume that the speed of the wave is 1. Using center difference approximation, the explicit formula for the given partial differential equation is ui, j plus 1 equal to r square ui minus 1, j plus 2 into 1 minus r square ui, j plus r square ui plus 1, j minus ui, j minus 1. Note that the four values are required to calculate the values of ui, j plus 1 for different values of i and j. For this case, we assume that h equal to 0 0.2. According to the problem, we have to select the value of h as 0 0.2 and k equal to 0 0.1. Therefore, r equal to ck by h equal to 0 0.5. According to the problem, the value of r should be less than or equal to 1. So for this case, the value of r satisfies that condition. That means the method can be applied for the given differential equation. The boundary conditions are 0, j equal to 0 and 5, j equal to 0 for all j. And the first initial condition with this is 2, i ui, 0 equal to 4 xi square for i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, where 5 is the number of sub intervals along x direction. And the second initial condition, that is del u del t equal to 0, is plus for 2, ui, 1 minus ui, minus 1 whole divided by 2k equal to 0. So this is the central difference approximation of the initial condition uh, for first del t. So from this relation, we can write ui, 1 equal to ui, 1. So these are the boundary and initial condition for the given problem. In this case, the value of r equal to 0 0.5. Therefore, the equation, difference equation 9, is simplified as mentioned in equation 10. That is, ui, j plus 1 equal to 0 0.25 into ui minus 1, j plus 1.5 into ui, j plus 0 0.25 into ui plus 1, j minus ui, j minus 1. When j equal to 0, then from equation 10, we have ui, 1 equal to 0 0.25 ui minus 1, 0 plus 1.5 into ui, 0 plus 0 0.25 into ui plus 1, 0 minus ui, minus 1. The value of u i comma minus 1 is unknown, but its value is determined from the initial condition for derivative and that value is nothing but u i comma 1. So using the value of u i comma minus 1 as u i minus i comma 1, the equation is transferred to u i comma 1 equal to 0 0.125 into u i minus 1 comma 0 plus 0 0.75 into u i comma 0 plus 0 0.125 into u i plus 1 comma 0. And this expression can be grouped as 0 0.125 or into u minus 1 comma 0 plus u i plus 1 comma 0 plus 0 0.75 into u i comma 0. So this expression gives the value of i u i comma 1 for all values of i. So this value gives all values of i for i j equal to 1 and for i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. For other values of j, that means when j equal to 2 or 3 and so on, the values of u are calculated from the equation 10. Now the initial and boundary values are shown in the following table. Note that the values of x are written in the lower line lower horizontal line, that is the values of x are 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 1.0. So these are the values of x and the values of t are 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 because k is taken as 0 0.1 and x, h is taken as 0 0.2. So these are, the initial, these are the initial and boundary values, initial values of x and t. So depending on the values and the boundary conditions, the left boundary values are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, mentioned by the blue vertical lines or blue, blue vertical zeros and the right boundary values are also zeros, these are mentioned by red vertical zeros. And the initial values for t equal to 0 are mentioned in the first row, that means the initial values of u when t equal to 0 are 0, 0 0.16, 0 0.64, 1.44, 2.56 and 0. Now the values of first row, that means the values of u i comma 1 for i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 are calculated by the following formula, u11 equal to 0 0.125 into u00 plus u20 plus 0 0.75 into u10. By substituting the values of u00, u20 and u10, these are the initial values, we obtain the value of u11 equal to 0 0.20. Similarly, the value of u1 is equal to 0 0.125 into u10 plus u30 plus 0 0.75 into u20. After simplification, the value of u21 equal to 0 0.68. Similarly, the value of u31 is equal to 1.48 and the value of u41 equal to 0 0.125 falling to u30 plus u50 plus 0 0.75 into u40. After simplification, the value of u41 is equal to 2.10. The all other values of u are tabulated in the following table. So this, this table gives the values of u for different values of x and t. 
the first blue column represents the left boundary values right blue color represents the right boundary values and the red values represents the initial values and the other values are mentioned in the black color that is the second row of the table that is when t equal to 0 0.1 the values are 0 0.2 0 0.68 triple 0 1.48 triple 0 2.1 0 0 0 0 that is these are the values of q when t equal to 0 0.1 and x equal to 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 and so on and lastly x equal to 1 when x equal to 1 the value is 0 for the third row from lower portion of the table that is when t equal to 0 0.2 the value of q when x equal to 0 0.2 is 0 0.3 triple 0 when x equal to 0 0.4 the value is 0 0.8 0 0 0 0 when x equal to 0 0.6 the value is 1.47500 when x equal to 0 0.8 the value is 0 0.9 triple 0 similarly when t equal to 0 0.3 and x equal to 0 0.2 the value is 0 0.46500 when x equal to 0 0.4 the value is 0 0.96625 when x equal to 0 0.6 the value is 1.75250 and when x equal to 0 0.8 the value is negative 0 0.29125 and similarly when t equal to 0 0.4 the values are mentioned in the last but below column below row and when t equal to 0 0.4 0 0.5 the values are mentioned in the top rows so these are the values of u for different values of x and different values of q so we have present an explicit method to solve hyperbolic partial differential equation and that particular equation is valid when the value of r lies between 0 and 1, 0 less than r and r less than or equal to 1. Now we present two implicit methods to solve the hyperbolic partial differential equation. The first implicit difference method, we have divided the equation 3, that means we have divided the right hand part of the equation 3 into two parts as this. That means the delta u del x2 is divided into two parts as delta u del x2 plus delta u del x2. And the first term is discretized at the mesh point i, j plus 1 and the second term is discretized at the mesh point i, j minus 1. Now, we approximate all these derivatives, second order derivatives, by using the center different approximation. By center difference approximation at the mesh point, ij, jk, the given equation reduces to, this on the left hand side is the approximate value of del 2u del t2 at the mesh point, ih, jk, that means it becomes 1 by k square into ui, j plus 1 minus 2 ui, j plus ui, j minus 1. So in this case, the value of i remains unchanged, but the value of j is changed. That means the value of j are j plus 1, j and j minus 1, because the derivative is taken with respect to t, that means the second derivative. And the right hand side, the first term, first bracketing term, represents the approximate value of del 2u del x2 at the mesh point i, j plus 1. Note that in this case, the approximation is ui plus 1, j plus 1, minus 2ui, j plus 1, plus ui plus i minus 1, j plus 1. That means the value of t is, remains unchanged, but the value of x is changed. That means the value of t is taken as the uh, time level j plus 1. And the second term is approximated as ui plus 1, j minus 1, minus 2 into ui, j minus 1, plus ui minus 1, j minus 1. In second term, j is replaced by j minus 2. In first term, the substitute for j is j plus 1. And in second term, the substitute for j is j minus 1. So this is the explicit, implicit formula to solve the hyperbolic equation. Now we present another implicit formula to solve hyperbolic partial differential equation. In this formula, the right hand side is divided into three parts. But actually, the coefficient of the parts are 1, 2, and 2. So this can be taken as the weights of the parts. The parts is 3, but the weights are 1, 2, and 1. That is the sum of the weights are 4. That's why the right hand side is multiplied by c square by 4. And these three terms are approximated by the central difference scheme at the mesh points i, j plus 1, i, j, and i, j minus 1. So using this approximation, the left hand term remains same as in the previous case. But the first term, first term of the right hand side is approximated as u i plus 1, j plus 1, minus 2 into u i, j plus 1 plus u i minus 1 comma j plus 1. What will be the second approximation that is the approximation of second term? In this case, the second subscript is replaced by j i minus i plus j is replaced by i. And in the third term, the second subscript is replaced by j minus 1. That is the j is replaced by j minus 1. So this is the second implicit formula to find the solution of hyperbolic partial differential equation. And both this formula, that means both the implicit difference formulae are valid 